come give the Lord thanks for this week and the Lord go on and he allow us to do this week so far. So I'm giving her another kill. Gather kill. I praise the Lord this morning on this morning. We will just want to take this time. Give thanks unto the Almighty Lord for his goodness to watch each one of us. I got a song that I wanted to sing. And you know what? I'm gonna ask um, I'm gonna ask for some help this morning. Now you know the Bible teaches us in the book of I think it's First Timothy chapter chapter two and verse seven. Let's put it up for me, please, brother. Let me read that together. All right. Let's go, ladies. Let's go, ladies. Let's go, ladies. He has not given us the spirit of fear. So I'm going to ask the two young ladies to come with me this morning. We're going to sing. Uh, I'm no longer a slave. I'm going to ask him to come right now. We're going to try to do it by myself, but I know I can't do it by myself. I'm going to ask him to come. Let's see if we can get him to come quickly. Let's come, let's come, let's come, young ladies.
20. One of you have anybody visiting with for the first time this morning? Anybody? Anybody? Praise the Lord for anybody who is here who's locked it up this morning. We just pray that the service may to be a blessing to you. Also, we want to encourage you to pray much for our young people. And we endeavor to try to get them involved in our service and our service and try to get them involved in the work of God. So we encourage you to pray for them as they get into the work of the Lord. Also, we want to please be reminded that we want you to be reminded of our church calendar. The events that are scheduled for the remainder of the week, uh, such as our evening worship service this evening, we ask you to pray for that. Our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer meeting. Also, we want to remind you of our church fellowship, our church fellowship that is scheduled for this coming Friday right here at our church. Uh, it is a function for the fellowship of our people. So we encourage you to please come on and take part in it. Also, uh, the organizing committee, they want to ask all of you, all of our people, to make a small donation towards it. They say it's not a, it's, it's a fellowship of our people. So we are going to encourage you, as much as in your power, even if you just give $5, immediately before the service, the offer bag is going to be right in the back of the, the back of the building. So you can come by and you can present, and you can give more if you want to. But we ask that everybody just give a $5 to help you for the cost of this fellowship. It would be greatly appreciated. So we're going to ask you to be reminded of that as, uh, as we exit the building this morning. Also, we will remind you of our uh, upcoming events. Also, remember to pray for Brother Randy Jacobs, Brother Allen, and all the folks who will be coming with them to celebrate our upcoming revival. Remember to pray for those persons as they get into work on the passports and they can decide to get their tickets and their hotel situation sorted out. Pray that everything will work out for them. Also, just to let you let's be reminded, as Brother Norris said, the men who will be coming with Brother Randy and Brother Allen, they will be assisting persons to have their material. The church will not be buying the materials for you. Those who, the men who will be coming will not be buying the materials. If you have your material, they will, hope that they will be um, providing the labor to use that material to assist you whatever home material you may have. So let's be reminded of that also. Also, let's pray much for the reduction of new groups that will be the first. The first Friday in the month of February. First Friday in the month of February. So we encourage you to please keep that in mind. Also, the resumption of the Asian Fellowship. As far as we get a date for that, we will announce that as well. We ask you to keep updated on that. Let's finish the prayer. Also, for uh, uh, Soul Women, uh, Soul Women uh, Ministry, pray much for our missionaries. Finish the prayer for Brother Joy and Brother, Brother, Brother AJ and Press. Finish the prayer for a larger aircraft. Pray that the Lord will do that in that also. Also, we encourage you to pray much for our bus ministry. Pray that the Lord will do that in that and the factory ministry. We encourage you, as much as in your power, if you can give something and watch the factory ministry, be a channel gift or monetary gift, that would be appreciated also, so that in the event of one of our people who need help, if you have something, we'll be able to help them with funds in that matter also. Also, we encourage you to pray much for our nation. Pray for the Lord will be done in our lives. We should pray for our leaders for the Lord will be done in their lives. Pray most of all for their souls. We encourage you to pray for and bless them. Pray for good godly and blessing who is outside of um, praying for the youth of our nation. We encourage you to pray for these souls. Also, we ask you to pray, pray much for our pastors. Uh, I pray for our pastor senior pastors. Give the Lord thanks. Bring him back safely. As he is away from us for a while. So we encourage you to pray for them, pray for the Lord, so we pray for the men and their families. Okay, at this time, we're going to invite um, uh, James Cannon to the podium for the spot of responsive reading, taken from the book of Mark, chapter 5, Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 through verses 20. We encourage you to, oh, sorry, Brother Cannon. Uh, so let me invite the ushers to come, come quickly as we, as we prepare to take this offering. Let's take an offer before the, before the responsive reading. We invite the ushers to come. And as they come, we can turn their Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 1, to verse 10, for the spot of responsive reading. Okay, now we're going to ask Brother Mark to ask for one's blessings upon the offer uh, uh, this morning.
you will see more things. We pray you will pray about single messages and the temple, even for the Lord as well. We pray you will pray for those persons who are not feeling well, who are about to get as ill as they could get. We be mindful of them. Let's just pray for Evan Russell. Pray much for the Martin. Pray uh, uh, for Brother Martin to the Lord.
bring him to the throne of the world of kings.
Come on, stick with people in church. Come on, come on. Give me the sign of the Lord. Like I said, I'm looking for God first. And you know all things, you know my heart, you know my intents, you know my purpose. But before we quit to judge people and try to read into their lives, try to reach out to you know, the silence going on with them. I don't know when you come to church and catch on. Somebody soon when I'm saying, but catch on. But I turned this message and he spoke a little about forgiveness and love. And I really feel like love is missing in the church. It's like you say things and you don't really mean it. It's like he said in, 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 in Sunday school that if you love somebody, show them you love them. There's nothing wrong with calling someone out, just reaching out to them and not thinking other people's girlfriends, but just reaching out to people's sisters and just finding out what's going on with that person instead of making them feel uncomfortable. Every time in this church and they come around the church, I feel it. That is on the top. Those are the people that we need to reach out to. And it's God who wants to know the God. I'm trying to come back and share the gospel. It's, it's not as easy as you got to speak. Because the least thing we can do is like everybody's going to just jump on me. I want to listen to the Lord and I promise God that I will. But I need you, my brothers and my sisters, to keep me in prayer. You can't do it alone. One thing that I may have a problem with, and I can promise you that's the only problem I have is my patience, and I don't like foolishness, I don't like fakeness, and that's why I quit to speak, to speak all this stuff. But I just need you to continue to pray for me, and you all, I pray for you all, that you all get it right too, because you can't go through this thing faking it, man. You gotta be real. You gotta love people from a real place. You gotta show people we love them from a real place. Yeah, yeah. I need you guys, and you need me. Yeah. God can be any of us. I used to serve God, and I need you guys to just be, just be the question I need to just help me get to where I need to be in God. Stop all this pettiness. And just trust God and obey Him and just do what He's asking us to do. Because I'm doing my part, I know I'm doing my part, and I know I've seen a difference in my life, and I know that God is doing the work in my life. And but it's hard, it's hard, I'm telling you in the flesh, it's hard to know that people are just talking unnecessarily and not trying to lift them up. Courage and love. Come on, you gotta do better as a church. Amen. So I was back with my voice, I guess I was saying trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the
installed this, is one that everyone could reflect. So when I sing the words, I want you to listen to the word, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to picture what it'll be like once you get to heaven. I think if more people would put to the forefront what our futures look like, we live right. So every way, every morning I wake up, I try to remember what God Christ did on the cross for me. So I try to keep the cross at the forefront. So it helps me to live better. It reminds me of my flaws. I won't always get it right, but he ain't finished with me yet, you know? Then it fell oceans we we will sit at his feet. Or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says he will do. Where he sends, I will go. Never.
Mahatma Father, as they really listed it, I think God had another being here that was having a message this morning, or they were receiving something from your word. And at the end of the day, he could say to David, I was glad when he said, let's go to the house of the Lord. And so, God, I thank you for today. Now, bless that endeavor. Christ precious name, I pray. Amen. I read a story about a man named Jacob Crushy. He grew up in Singapore with one bright ambition. Not to be a successful individual. I don't know anybody who doesn't want to be successful. But uh, his ideas and his uh, reason for being successful for one reason only, and that was money and possession. He just wanted to be wealthy, he just wanted to enjoy the, uh, the, 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 the greater things of life, like many of us. That led him into a world of drugs, gambling, eventually, he became the Lord of money. International smuggling gang or network. He uh, he began to go after his passion and he went after it with a vengeance. In 1980, he was arrested and placed in a government drug rehabilitation prison in Singapore. He was frustrated beyond endurance. All his goals, purpose, dreams, and ambitions were locked up within in a tiny cell, and his heart was full of cold emptiness. He was angry because all that he had lived for seemingly, seemingly was going down the drain. He also was a smoker. He was a chain smoker. I had a, I, I, uh, one of my first cousins uh, who I lived with when I was much younger, when I was a boy. Uh, she was a chain smoker. She used to smoke about two or three six, uh, pack of cigarettes a day. I can I, I could see her right now in my mind's eye. Um, as, as one cigarette would burn down, she would light the next one with the piece of left until that pack was exhausted. And then she would tell me to go and bring up another pack of cigarettes. She spoke a cigarette that is called Salem. I don't know if it's still with those days. But she used to smoke a Salem cigarette. And, uh, and she was a chain smoker. This is exactly who she was. He was a chain smoker. smoker. But in the institution that he was in, Cigarettes were not permitted, tobacco was not permitted, but he smuggled it in anyhow. And because he could not find paper for him to smoke his cigarette, uh, at each cell they would give them a Gideon Bible. Gideon Bible been around a long, long time and is still around today. And, uh, and so he would tear the pages out of the Gideon Bible, and that is what he used to roll, he, he smuggled tobacco in. And he tell you the picture and he would roll that and uh, uh, make his cigarette and he would smoke that. One day as he uh, uh, was smoking uh, uh, his, his cigarette, uh, he fell asleep, asleep, uh, with the cigarette in his hand. And, and uh, it burned down to where he got out just a little piece and the flame woke him up or the, the, the heat from it. And when he woke up, he outed and, uh, and, uh, um, and only for some reason, he unraveled it, the tobacco fell out, and just a little piece was left, a writing was left, and they left with these seven words or six words. So, so, why thou persecute, or why persecute thou me? And he read it, and he just couldn't understand, you know, what this was all about. And so he became more concerned. He wanted to know what the rest of the writing was. And so he requested that they brought him another Bible. And so they brought him another Bible and he looked for that chapter in the book of Acts and he read the whole thing. As a result, he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. He met a Christian woman, Maria, and is now a missionary in the fires. So he tells people far and wide how to find the truth by smoking the word of God. I, I would say a, uh, a phenomenal testimony. You know, a lot of us don't have that kind of testimony. There were no bells when I got saved. I didn't hear any angels singing when I got saved. My testimony is simple. Torn out to preach the gospel, give an invitation. I walked the aisles, half my Christ led me to the Lord. Took me out to Yamakura Beach and baptized me a couple of Sundays later. That's my testimony. You see, some of us thought me, you don't remember when we got saved, but we know we got saved. But you have a testimony nevertheless. 
Jesus is demonstrating his power and nature by pain, uh, 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 by coming to see. And uh, as he come to see, and he got a cross there, he demonstrated his power over sin and Satan by claiming the soul of the demonic sinner, by forgiving him of his sin, by cleaning him up of his demons. And these verses here is the story of a man who became a messenger, a demonic, who nailed him to Christ. And everybody who saw him was afraid of him. The scripture tells us that we read it how he lived among the tombs, he lived in the grave and in the cemetery, all over the world of travel. And I've seen people that are, uh, that, are, that live on the street, that are homeless. I saw in America, they live under the bridges, uh, they, they live in different areas, uh, they, you know, they, 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 uh, like in the Bahamas, somebody you see them walk the road with, uh, with, with a, a full trolley, with all their belongings in it. All over the Caribbean, I've traveled the Middle East, and I've seen people like this. But I've never seen one living in the graveyard. I've been to many, many graveyards. I've never seen no one stationed in a graveyard. I don't know if there are any like that. But this man, they said, he lived in among the tombs. In verse 1 through 7, says, they came over onto the, the, on the other side of the sea. Into the country of the Gadarenes. Many was come out of the ship, immediately their men, out of their men in, out of the tombs, a man with an answer, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, with his dear to the things, because uh, he had been often bound with fetters, chains, and chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And all this night and day he was in the mountains and in the tomb crying, and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by the God or by God, that thou torment me not. Now you may wonder when you read verse number seven why he asked him to torment him not. Remember that he was possessed with all of these demons. Where were the demons supposed to be? They are, they are supposed to be condemned to eternal separation from God and man. To eternity. And so they did not want to go into eternity yet. And so they asked God, God Jesus not to torment him, not to send them. To the abyss where they're supposed to be. First, the form of verse number three tells us his home was among the tombs. This man lived his life among the dead. He was a sad, lonely, hurting, long, lonely, uh, a lonely man longing for, uh, for love. But he was out of love, he was out of wanted. Individuals didn't want to be around him. I do not know if there are any like that that exist in our community today. But there are people who don't want, want to be around certain people because of how they carry themselves. He is a picture of a person who is separated from God. In Jesus chapter 1, or chapter 2, verse 12 says that at that time, this is the way I was, this is the way you were. If you are a child of God today, this is a picture of what we was before we met Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, verse number 2. Uh, 12 of second of Ephesians chapter 2. He said that at that time we were without Christ, being aliens from uh, the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and no God in the world. What a sad life. I've been, I just came from the U.S. In, in the U.S., I was an alien, I was a foreigner. I remember one time, Brother Carl Lee and I, we were somewhere, I don't know whether we was on the airport or wherever we were, but we were, I, you don't see that sign anymore. I, I was just probably complaining about it. When you get on the airport in the U.S. and they have the resident, and then the next time they have, they didn't have numbers, they had aliens. Years ago, that, that's what the sign is doing. And Brother Carl Lee just complained, he said, man, I hate that sign. Alien. He said, I just don't sign right. Now, again, as I said, I do not know whether or not a lot of people complained about it, but you, you, you will not see that sign in America. 
urban and four and four. You know, I was non residents. Residents. The, the scripture said we were aliens. When you think about aliens, you think we're coming from outer space. Now, they listen, there are no aliens in outer space. This is the only kind of where there is life. You can believe what you want, you can think what you want, you can read what you believe, and everything what you want to read. But God made the mind, he put man on it, and he called it earth. You see? Colossians chapter 1 verse 21 says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now are he reconciled. We're reconciled in it. He brought to himself, he made peace with us, he gave us God our comfort, he brought us into his, he brought us into his family. So not only was this man a home among the among the, the tombs, but the verse 4 to 5 said he was a helpless man. The verse 4 to 5 says, because that he had been often bound with, with fetters. Back in the old days, what they did with the with their uh, captors, whether they were criminals or whether they, they were enemies, they would put chains around their ankles. Somebody had put a big ball, iron ball on that also. And the reason why they put that iron ball on it, so they would, they would not be able to run fast, run away. And so the chains, it was different from the handcuff. And so they had feathers on his leg, and they had chains on his hand. They tried to team him. But he had so many demons in him. I think they said, I mean, it's about 12,000. No, about 12,000. He had over 12,000 demons. Listen, this man was strong, man. Now, when you calculate the strength of all those demons in one body, I was talking about mm-hmm. the all those things that they were threats. And so, when his captains saw this, the best thing to do was get away from him. Because if he could walk chains like that, he might have been able to get away. And so, he got the chains and he headed for the sanctity. That's where he stayed. Was five years and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. This is what he did. He was there. He was, this was the tears of a wasted life. His life was wasted in sin. And this is why he was helpless and he was there in a place. Why do I go? If there are people that are missed this morning, helpless because of a wasted life. Tears for cause of a wasted life. You don't have to be that way. God oh, help us. He was a man who was out of control. How does it try to intervene in his life? But to no avail. He could, they could not help him. No man could change him. He was a man sold under the influence of evil. The things that he done, I do not know. What caused this? I do not know what was the background. I do not know what his parents did. You know, sometimes we can bring a curse upon our children. We can bring a curse upon our families. We need to break that curse. We need to move away from some things that we probably are doing or have done. And you need to pray for your children. You need to pray for yourselves. You need to pray for your country. You need to pray for your home. You need to pray for your environment. You need to ask God to help those demons to be broken away, taken away from us. Again, he is a picture of that lost person who is out of control and under the strong influence of sin. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, it says, during the time past, he says, he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience among whom also I like this verse. You see, why do you like it? It's, it's the past. I'm no longer like this anymore. He said, among whom also you are, and this is a place that I'm to have the past. This is what I used to be. Don't tell me what I used to be. Tell me what I am. And our conversation, our conduct, our behavior, I'm going to have a conversation here, has to do with. In times past, again, another word of the past, another presence. I'm different now. So Jesus came into my heart. I am different now. I'm a new man. I'm a new 
new, I'm a new person. And the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, but of the mind, and will by nature the children of God, even as others all is saying, yeah, this is what I used to be. He said, now listen to me. He said, don't you feel as I used to be? He said, what they are is who be what I used to be. You better pray for them. You better be thankful that you are not what they are. So that's what you used to be. You know, a lot of times we as Christians, we have a tendency of looking down our nose at other people because they are not what we are. We are only what we are by the grace of God. Amen. And that's all. I do not deserve to be what I am. I do not deserve to have what I have. I do not, not deserve to have the mind that I have. But it's by the grace of God. God is not. But for the grace of God, I could be on the street picking up bottles and put them in a tray or something. I could become long bones. I could be dirty, dirty and never bathe my skin. But for the grace of God. Thank God for his goodness and for his goodness. This man. He was in that cemetery. He was there because something went wrong. Thank God that you are not there. Thank God for where you are today. You know, people who care, who try to intervene in the lives of others. Yeah. 
school. Try to, try to kill a second one die. That's what sin will do to you. Sin will cause you to try to commit suicide. People climb up on these buildings sometimes because things didn't go right and they jump off and fade into hell. Someone take a gun put to their head, fade into hell. Some drink a cocktail of poison. Sin will do that to you. So this torment was continued. It says in verse 5. Night and always night and day he was in the armpit and in the tombs crying. Wasted tears. Crying. Oh my God. Think of the man, the woman, the young person who last night lay on their pillows and looked at the swan and then sweat. The tears of the swan and their heart will come, but their heart will be. Yes, we better share some tears to be out the peace of God. Oh, I wish that man. Our tears, sometimes the tears of Thanksgiving, sometimes it is tears of a burden for somebody else. But their tears are tears of pain, tears of regrets, tears of agony. What a pathetic scene. This is this is pain concerning this man and his lost condition. Surely he wanted a different life when he was absolutely helpless and powerless to accomplish that by himself. But God, we as children of God, we have someone that we can look to, someone that we can turn to, someone that we, we can call on. So it is with every lost person they are hopeless. It is the lifestyle that they become so hopelessly trapped. They're trapped in that life. I know people who are trapped in that life. I talk to people about I would say every day, but every now and again I talk to people that are trapped. And I just I my point in my heart, you know, I, I get to know people, I don't think I don't know, I don't know if they are some acquaintance and they all like that you that that you that, that are, they're good people. But they're trapped in sin. They're trapped in a life of darkness, of hopelessness without God. There's this particular man who I know that did not believe in God. And he died. As I prayed for him this morning, I prayed, I, I said, God, you know, I'm praying uh, as, as I, was, I, I was thinking on, on, on my notes for this message this morning. And I said, Lord, let it die, let it die. Cushy, cushy of a uh, uh, smoke, the Bible leaves, and, 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 uh, and just those six words were left. Uh, so and so, my persecutor is down, you know, seven words. Is, I, I said, I pray that this, this man, does he read the Bible? And I, I said, Lord, well, I, I pray that one of these days the scriptures that we read would resonate. The Holy Spirit of God would burn in his soul. And somehow the Holy Spirit of God would move him to, 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 uh, to, to himself. And he would see his need of a savior. That's what I can pray for you. That's what we can do. So I want you to take the horses and grab the camels and go. I'm telling you, that's why we should pray every day. Every day. Sitting with God in the wind. Ourselves and God. We need to pray. We need to trust Him. Verse 6 through 7. It says, When he saw Jesus of Pharaoh, he ran and worshipped him. Verse 7. Verse 7 says, And he cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? These are the demons crying out. I adjure thee, I command thee, I beg thee by God. Wow. Is this not something? The demon saying, I beg thee by God that thou torment me not. Man, man, woman, the young person said, There's no God. Mm. Deep down in their soul, they know there is a God. John Gopher said, The word of God enlightened every man that is born in 
this world. He needed someone to rescue him. To rescue him. He needed someone to do for him that which he could not do for himself. Somebody called me yesterday evening. I don't know who it is, or who it was. And they asked if uh, somebody was to his house in Calvary Beach yesterday with Pastor Grass. I told him, I said, I, I, I'm not sure. He said, I saw a tabernacle Baptist church. I said, well, as far as I know, there's only one tabernacle Baptist church on the island. I said, so apparently somebody was there. He asked me what time the service started. I don't know what reason church was going. And I told him, it, it, was a, it was a day. He said, thank you, sir. He said, I appreciate it. Now, let me tell you something. You don't know how far your business goes. You see, you might just leave a gospel track on somebody's doorstep. And the person who you get left the form may not be the somebody else to pick it up and read it. God used his word, it is not your word, it is not our word, it is God's word. One day, Susan, Doctors Oath, that cemetery probably was near the seaside. Not probably, according to scriptures, it says that the, the swine run over the rock and drown themselves. But Jesus just had his boat to be docked against that cemetery. God knew where that demon was, that young that demonic was. God knew exactly where you are. And God would dock his boat near your. Uh, you are not one of these days if he has not already done so. When he docked it there, he would minister to your soul like he did with this demonic. He docked it both there and he went and he approached this demonic and the demonic says, Go away from us, leave us alone. But you know, thank God that he did not listen to him. What if God left that man alone? What if Jesus left him alone? He would have been crying in hell. How is this past? The sun is in, and I'm not ashamed. But he found himself in the field of the, of the one, only one, the savior of the universe, the creator of the universe, who, who could help him. Thank God that Jesus didn't leave that man to wallow in the wretchedness of his sin, of his demonic, of our situation. Thank God Jesus crossed the sea through that storm just to reach that one man. You know Jesus is going to come to earth before you will move here. Oh, how much he loved this world for God so loved the world. But he gave us only the doctrine church. It doesn't matter, my dear friend, who you are. We love you. He would have come just for you alone. He would have come. Aren't you glad that God is not willing that they should perish according to 2 Peter 3 and 9? That all that come to repentance. He don't want you to go to hell. He came to where we are and called us to come to him. Come unto me all in the labor and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. John 6 and 44 is going to come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him. That's what he did. He drew me to himself. He drew me to himself. He entered the Father, uh, the, the, the my the name. He, he entered where I was. And he called me. He came with me. He, he who died with me, he must do the same to you. He said, Go call him the days, man. He was my days, man. He is your days, man. He wants to be your days, man. Joe 9 and 33. This is just what Jesus has done for every sinner who will come to him. You see, I like the Peter says, I look at uh, um, uh, um, uh, Paul says in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 14 through 16, he says, For he is our peace, who has made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There is no more suffering between God and him. He says, Having abolished in the, in the flesh, the enmity, even the law of, command, of, of commandments, contained 
and ordinances for to make in himself of twain, of two, he made one, one new man, so make him peace, and that he might reconcile all unto God to one body, uh, into in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. You see, under the law, there were all kinds of little ordinances, little uh, things, the commandments that you have to follow, and you still get the man of eternal life. All these things did under the law was covered. The, you know, the same treatment under the law that God had told the story some years ago. He said, um, um, when the focus of the Galatians, the pastor talked about the Baptist church, the pastor came to our law, he did, uh, he, 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 he worshiped, he said, um, um, the full of preacher, a message that says nobody goes to clean the church, they said, this is full of clean the church, and whatever, so the guy volunteered to go down and clean the church. And so you see, he went there, the full of Billy McKee, but Billy, so he went down, and he said, this particular Saturday, he was sleeping, sleeping, but he, he seemed to be in work all night. And when he got that day, he had been sleeping from work, And they went out to see what it 
was that was not. They that they that come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and uh, have a legion sitting and clothing and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Wow. And they that saw it told them how it would be up to him that is possessed with the devil, and also concerning this mind, and they began to pray him to the part of all their hope. You, you believe that these people want to be there. They said, they know what this man was. We do not deserve to have a person like this prophet. We are not worthy of his presence. We want because if, if he could do this, I don't want to say that we are for being in this town. This man put his hand, this is not for he able to do this. You see. We need the divine touch of God upon this island, upon our nation. Things are happening in our earth. I've never, listen, um, uh, statistically, I don't, I don't know if this is the first time, but this is the first time I can remember that before the 12th of the month, we got 12 people dead. In the first of the year. That is awful. People are living as if nothing is happening. People don't care. But we need a touch of Jesus. And we need Jesus to pass by the, 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 um, uh, the country of the Bahamas. We need his hand. We need, we need a start. That which this man nor anyone else could do was accomplished by the Lord Jesus Christ. One word from Jesus and this man was free. There is no way there is no way to secure it by religion. The only way is to get it through Jesus Christ and his faith. Remember in Acts chapter 16, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That's the case. He came so that no man might be without the grace of God. You ask the woman at the well. Will tell you. Yes. And see a man. They told me everything that ever I done. If you ask Barnabas, he'll tell you, and see a man. They gave you back my sight. If you ask him on the issue of blood, he'll tell you, come see a man. He'll heal me of my bleeding. If you ask any man at the pool of a pastor, he will tell you, come see a man. He'll give me strength back in my legs. If you ask the leper, he'll tell you, come see a man. That they be clean from my leprosy. He asked the man of the blind, he'll tell you. He just talked to chapter 9, he'll tell you, come see a man. He'll give me back the sight. He asked Saul of Tarsus, he'll tell you, come see a man. Who saved me from a sin? He asked the disciples, they will tell you, come see a man. Who changed my direction to the light? He asked Lazarus, he'll tell you, come see a man. Who raised me from the dead? Amen. Jesus is that man. He can do it to you this morning. So that you've done it for this morning. The only way for him to do it, you have to acknowledge who you are and what you are. You come to him in faith, and he will cleanse you from your every sin, from your cast of every evil. He will set a prisoner free. He will break your fetters, he will break your chains, and he will set you at liberty. And then you will want to go, let me know. Jesus told you, come on if you go and tell your friends. Do things the Lord has done, and you know what he did? He went on the side of Jesus. When the people came, they saw this, they had seen it. He went, You will not want to do Jesus. If you trust him, he will. Let us know. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you again for this. We thank you, God, for your word and for the truth. Oh Lord, we pray for that man and woman and young person who might be under the sound of our voice that they might be with the Lord and Savior. God, I don't know what they may be possessed with today. Maybe it's drink, maybe it's drugs. God, maybe it's father violence. God, maybe it is under father uh, profanity. God, I don't know. Whatever it might be, whatever it is that have control of their lives. God, I pray for your mercy and your grace upon them. And we thought that they come to the place where they know you and the part of their sin, where they can find 
liberty you can find, Father, deliverance, Father, I think we can. Father, you will do it for those who will come to you in faith. Oh, God, I pray for that man and woman who are out of fellowship with you. I pray that, Father, they will get in front of this, this city. They will come, Father, they will ask you for mercy. Father, now, Father, they will get back. Lord, I pray for the places where they used to be, serving you in a better place. Uh, Lord, I'm singing in the choir, whether it is uh, being an usher uh, on a board, or whatever it is that you do, uh, I pray, God, for them today. And they will call this so they come. Father, they need just to come and pray. I pray that God will do so. Father, we need our hearts to pay us in Jesus Christ's name. Let us be sick. 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 Let us be sick.